convolution model network like AlexNet have a feature extraction portion composed of convolution layers and a fully connected section at the end for classification. The others of network and network argue that the convolution layers alone might not be optimal since there are generalized linear models and their abstraction level is low. The other furthermore remark that the final classification layer are like black boxes and it's difficult to interpret why a category was selected. Also, it need regularization to not overfit. The others therefore propose an alternative architecture addressing these two main point of concerns. They introduced a multi-layer perception convolution layer instead of the traditional flat convolution layer. They also replaced the fully connected layers at the end of the network with a global average pooling of the feature map. In today's video, we'll explore the sample network architecture taken from the paper Network and Network and see a short PyTorch implementation at the end. All links are in the description. The first change to explore is the MLP conv layer. Instead of the standard linear convolution layer, we are adding a network with three layers in between. That network is slid like a convolution operation across the inputs, and then its output is combined before being stored in the next layer. That operation is very similar to a to two one-on-one -on -one convolution operation chained together. We'll use the following image as a quick example to understand one-on-one -on -one convolution, where you have a 64 by 64 input with 192 feature filters. If you're interested in learning more in depth what a one-on-one -on -one convolution is, do check out my video on the subject. One-on-one -on -one convolutions were very influential, making their way in subsequent years in the inception architecture and into the residual neural network architecture for the bottleneck function. A one-on-one -on -one convolution can be understood as a single fully connected neuron being slid over the input. In this particular example, we have a 64 by 64 input with 192 feature filter. This means that we have one neuron in this image with 192 learnable weights slid over the 64 by 64 surface. You can modulate the number of filter that you get out by simply adding more of these neurons. So in this image, if you want to go from feature filter size of 192 to three, you would just add three neurons this layer. With the one-on-one -on -one convolution, the number of these neurons is equal to the number of filter output at the end. And each of these filters has its own set of weights, so they learn different projection operation. So summarizing the whole thing, if you add a volume width W and I H with the number of channels CH, you can create N one by one CH filter that will output N H by W by one filter that will then be concatenated together. And you can replace the one-on-one -on -one convolution here by number of neuron. So in this particular case of the network and network, the number of neurons will define the number of filter output. So the second idea that the author had was to introduce the global average pooling at the end. Let's check out what is the difference with the fully connected layer. So as we can see, usually when you have a fully connected layer at the end, you need to take all of your feature map and then flatten them up to feed them to the network uh, so that it's 1D. This put the convolution part of the network as a feature extractor and the fully connected part as the actual classifier. Contrasting this with global average pooling, you take each feature map and then you average them out each to one number before the soft max. So this means that the convolution network is the classification layer. It also means that the last number of feature map need to match the number of class to predict. Another added benefit of the global average pooling layer is that there's no parameter to learn here. So that's the two main change that the other introduced. Let's see how it perform on the different datasets. So there are three datasets being used in this result section, which are the three usual one. So you have Cypher 10 or 100 with the 60,000 images. You have MNIST, which is a simple 10 class dataset with 70,000 70, images. Finally, you have SVHN, which is 600,000 digit image of house number from Google Street View. The main network that the networking network was comparing against was max out as it was a state of the art roughly at the time. The first result is network and network versus state of the art on Cypher 10. Is as we can see here, the other used dropout in the architecture for regularization for the network and network. As a refresher, dropout is a very simple method to stochastically turn off neurons to reduce the chance of co-activation across neurons, meaning that basically the layers are less prone to overfitting. As we can see in this graph, the blue lines are the testing error with or with the dropout for network and network, and dropout in network and network is useful for regularization. So in this image, you can see that on Cypher 10, the network and network is achieving state of the art here. There's great result. And if we take a look at the Cypher 100, which is the same thing, but with 100 class, it's not surprising. We see a similar uh, setup where network and network is state of the art. On the SVHN dataset, then we have that the network achieved good result, but much less than the other network, like multi-digit number recognition or drop connect. Still, it's pretty close. Then the other went onto MNIST dataset. The result wasn't set of the art, but it was also close enough. So this, this dataset MNIST is already pretty optimized at this point. 
The other then checked out if swapping their global average pooling for a fully connected layer changed the result on Cypher. And as you can see here, there is a one point difference between the fully connected version of the network and global average pooling. This showcased that the in the network and network case, this difference is substantial and it's useful to have a global average pooling. Also, they used that for their final experiment where they went through what was uh, happening at the last MLP conv layer with the top 10% activation just before the global average pooling. So now we can see what is happening in this layer before the classification. So in the x-axis, we have the different feature maps, right at the end, we need 10 because we need to do global average pooling. And on the y-axis, we have the image fed at the start of the network. As highlighted, the activation is largest for the class that are matching the ground truth. This makes sense since the global average pooling will average a, a feature map to one number per map and then use a soft max to, uh, to do the network classification at the end. But here it's cool because we have a good visualization and sanity check, which has an added benefit for debugging the network. If the, the, the network had two classes that were very similar, you could argue that the image were a bit confusing. All right, so let's check out the architecture in the PyTorch code now. You will see it's pretty simple. It won't take too long. Okay, here we are. Um, this piece of code is pretty uh, straightforward. Uh, it's not in the original PyTorch um, documentation or whatnot. It's in uh, this guy. Uh, github um, and uh, this implementation is, is really good and good enough so we're going to go through it you have the class over here and it's pretty much that there's nothing much here there is this function to initialize the weight right nothing too crazy here it just depends on the module and it's all basically convolution layer so it doesn't matter and then the forward function here is just basically going through the layer that are already defined and that's that so uh, we're going to go through the, the stack and you will see what I mean by uh, it being just one long convolution. That's the crux of the the, the network and network is that it's one long convolution and it's global average pooling. So if you look at the end, you see here we don't have like a linear um, or like a, a fully connected layer at the end. It's just like the average pooling here and that's kind of that. Like the, that's it. There's nothing else. And there's no there's not much parameter here to take into consideration. The only thing that matters here is the convolution, uh, the last one, that he has the number of classes as the last uh, number. And this is a one-on-one, -on -one, so it's fine. We can uh, modulate the number of classes easily. Um, so this is that for the average pooling. And then if you look at the pattern, at the topmost, we have like a, a five by five and that we're slitting across the, um, uh, the input, like in like in AlexNet. And then we have a, our non-linearity, and then we have the first network in network, which is basically two one-on-one -on -one convolution chained together here, right? And it's pretty easy to modulate the, um, uh, the feature filter however we want. As you will see, they will go down and they will go up, and that's pretty standard with one-on-one um, -on -one convolution, like if you think about the bottleneck architecture and the residual network and stuff like that. And after each of these network, there's a max pooling, just like the the, uh, in the paper and finally we have a dropout that is added in these um, uh, these layers so that's our first network the MLP conv thing and then it's the same thing that is repeating roughly this is the MLP conv thing again and finally this is the MLP conv that finish with the, uh, the number of class being 10 and that's it that's the whole network and network architecture the cool thing that you have to take uh, out of this is the power of the one-on-one -on -one convolution and the usefulness of the average pooling, because then afterward, if you want to study how the classification is done, you can just take a look at this uh, this layer and you'll be good. And that's it. All right, everyone, I hope this was useful. Don't forget to like the video if it was the case and leave a comment if you have any question. I'm here to help. Have a great week, everyone, and see you in the next video.